If you're watching this, you're probably wondering what Vulkan.js is. And I'm going to tell you, but before that, let me give you a bit of background on the project. So around 2012, I started an open source project called Telescope. And Telescope was uh, based on the Meteor open source JavaScript framework. And the whole idea was to let people uh, easily launch Hacker News or Product Hunt clones. In other words, forums with features like comments, uh, upvotes, downvotes, and so on. And Telescope was fairly successful. And some of the, the best implementations include uh, Creator.io, a community for programming, as well as uh, Smart Hosts, a community for vacation rental pros, and a lot of other forums, communities, and, and similar news sites. And Telescope was great, but what I realized was that the best, the most interesting applications of Telescope weren't necessarily um, simple news sites. And people really wanted to be able to customize uh, the app and bend it to their own needs. And so uh, about a year ago, when we started uh, porting Telescope to a new data layer, Apollo, at the same time, we decided to refocus the mission of the project from just being a Hacker News clone to being more of an app platform, which could be used to build Hacker News clones, but also any kind of web app. And so this brings us to Vulkan. Vulkan.js is the new name, the new brand for Telescope. It can still do everything Telescope could do, but in addition, it can do a lot more and it's a lot more flexible. So I mentioned Apollo, and I guess this is a good time to talk a little bit about the technical stack uh, of Vulkan. So Apollo is uh, also made by MDG, the company that makes Meteor, and it's a set of tools around the GraphQL syntax for querying data. And the really cool thing about GraphQL is that not only is it really uh, expressive and it lets you define exactly uh, what subset of data you need on the client, but it's also implemented in a way that's completely independent from your database. And so if we look at the stack for Vulkan, we're still using MongoDB as a main data source, but we could use something else if we wanted to. And then on the server, we still have Meteor, but it's just uh, used as a build tool and server. The data layer, on the other hand, is powered by a GraphQL server. And then on the client, we have a GraphQL client whose job is to fetch the data we need and store that data in the Redux store. Now, Redux is a very, very popular uh, state management library, especially in the React ecosystem. So it makes sense that the last piece of our puzzle, uh, our front-end library, is React. So what you get with all this is a pretty tightly integrated package, except that unlike the original Meteor, which was a bit monolithic, here uh, every library can be independent and can work outside of the Vulkan stack. So how do you get started with Vulkan? Well, the best way is to check out the docs and follow the install instructions, after which you'll uh, have three possible examples to look at. The uh, example movies package, example Instagram, and finally example forum. Now let's start with uh, example movies, which includes a pretty extensive tutorial that really takes you through uh, every step uh, involved and showcases every Vulkan feature. And basically, uh, the result is a pretty simple uh, list of movies where you can load more data, um, you know, edit an item, and of course, insert a new document. Now, already you can see a few useful features. Of course, you have the user accounts here, which are powered by Meteor's own account system. But also one of the most important Vulkan features is probably the collection schemas. And in Vulkan, the schema uh, kind of centralizes uh, a lot of information used throughout the code base. So for example, here we are loading uh, specific fields of the movies collection. And in order to do this, we need to set up a GraphQL data layer. And that GraphQL data layer uses a GraphQL schema that is generated from the JSON collection schema. In other words, 
we have a single JSON schema here uh, specified using a simple schema. And that will serve as a single source of proof to generate the GraphQL data layer. As you can see, some of these fields have uh, viewable by properties, which indicates that they can be viewed by any uh, user, any guest. If you change this to a member, the field will not be publicly viewable anymore, or you can change it to admins or any other user groups. And because of this uh, schema-based approach, that in turn will uh, transfer to every other aspect of the app. Now, another thing I can do with this uh, schema-first approach is uh, generate forms. And for example, this uh, edit movie form is entirely generated from the schema, which is very useful to control not only the form uh, behavior on the server, but also the way it looks on the client. In other words, if I go back and uh, take the, the year field here and comment out the line that makes it editable by members, well, not only will uh, any uh, year property will get validated out on the server, but actually the field won't even appear on the client because Vulkan knows it's not supposed to be editable. So let's now take a look at the second example, the Instagram example. Here I'm in my meter packages file and all I had to do to activate this example is comment out the example movies package and uncomment the example Instagram package. This is a good chance for me to point out that Vulkan uses what's called a package-based architecture where every feature is a separate package. So if I look at the example Instagram package, well, here you can see exactly which features of Vulkan it uses. It uses the, the core, forms, accounts, and then forms upload packages. What's really cool is first of all, I don't need to load any code that I'm not using, which saves on launch time and bundle size. And also, if I want my own version of the forms package, I can duplicate the forms package, change uh, its name, and then I can work on my own copy without having to modify any of the other core code. But for now, let's go back to our Instagram example. So this is what it looks like in the browser. And what you can see here are my own photos of Japan. Uh, it's quite a nice place, actually. You should come visit if you have the chance. As you might expect, you can add comments. You can edit your own comment. Uh, if you're an admin, which I am, you can edit other people's comments. Uh, a nice extra in this example is the uh, image upload uh, package here, which enables uh, a custom React component. So instead of just having a text area or a text input, here we have this custom image upload. And by the way, you can notice that the form UI I have here is the same I had in the movies example. And that's because all this is part of the Vulkan forms package. And this makes it really easy to get started on new projects because you don't really have to code any of these form fields or any of the form behavior. Again, it just comes uh, pre-packaged. And of course, you can modify it and customize it uh, if you need to later on. But at least in the beginning, it really saves you a lot of time. I also need to mention that Vulkan features a lot of tools and presets to make setting up your data layer a lot easier. So, for example, um, let me reload this. And if I uh, inspect my React components, here I have the pics list component, which contains all the pictures. And you can see it's getting this uh, results uh, array passed as a prop, which contains our documents. And that array is in turn passed by a higher order component called with list. And these uh, data loading higher order components are actually fairly easy to set up. So if we go to our picks list component here, you can see it's being wrapped with two higher order components with current user, which passes the current user prop and then with list, which passes the results, loading, load more, and other props. And with list takes 
an options argument which has three properties collection uh, which is the collection from which you want to load data fragment name which is a graphql fragment that specifies which fields you want to load on that specific collection and then optionally a limit to indicate how many documents you want to load and then just based on this the with list container will do the job of loading the data um, setting the loading props to true if needed and um, also handling pagination for you so this is a very um, interesting approach because data loading code actually can be quite tricky especially in apollo because while in meteor a lot of um, data updating is done for you for free in apollo you do need to do it manually and write um, callback functions that will update data when it changes and uh, Vulkan does this for you, which is why, you know, when you add a comment here, it will appear automatically without having to write any um, logic to update your Redux store. So this has been a very high level overview of Vulkan. And of course, there would be a, a lot more to say about the data layer and all the other ways that Vulkan tries to make your life easier. But I, I encourage you to check out the documentation there's actually a full video walkthrough of the Instagram example, uh, if you're curious. And while Vulkan is still pretty young, I'm actually already using it uh, in production. I'm using it on Sidebar, my newsletter of design links. And I'm also using it for a project I recently launched called Gamba, which is a directory of climbing videos. So thanks for watching. I hope you have a chance to check out Vulkan. And if you have any questions or maybe if you just want to say hello, uh, don't hesitate to drop by our Slack chat room. It's pretty active and we always welcome uh, visitors. So thanks again and hopefully see you soon.